welcome to another at-home learning activity with Mrs. Sands. Today is Tuesday and Tuesdays are for mapping. Last week we made a heart map and that map showed us information about who you are. Today we're going to be making a map of an imaginary place and so the map today is going to show information about that place. Maps have the same things no matter who makes the map. And these things give us information and it makes it so that the user of the map, the reader of the map, knows what to expect and what to look for. Maps always have a title so we know where the place is that we're looking at. Maps also always have a key, also called a legend, and symbols that go with them. And those symbols are on the key in the legend and then they're also located on the map. So for instance, a key of a map might have a little circle and I might say that that circle means there's a city. And then scattered around on the map, you'll see circles, and that means every place that there's a circle, a city is there. Maps also have a compass rose, and that's to give you directions. So a compass rose has north on it. Sometimes a compass rose will have north, east, south, and west. Sometimes a compass rose will have the directions in between, the ordinal directions, north, northeast, east, southeast, south, and so on. You'll get to decide what kind of compass rose you want to make. Lots of map makers make their compass roses really elaborate and beautiful and little works of art all on their own. Maps also have a scale so you know how far the distance is on the map. If you're looking at a map, you wanna know is the distance from here to there eight miles? Is it 108 miles? Is it eight feet? What am I looking at? So this scale will help you know how far the distances on the map are. Hello, kitten. And then maps also have place names. And the place names are labels right on the map so you know what those places are. Before we get to how you're going to make your own map today, I wanna to give you a little bit of inspiration. I happen to love books that have maps in them. And I have a lot of them. If I go to a bookstore and I find a book and it has a map inside it, there's a really good chance that book is going to come home with me. So I wanted to share with you some kids books and adult books that have maps to get your brain humming a little bit before we get started. So here, for instance, is the very first Spiderwick Chronicles book. And right inside Spiderwick Chronicles is this gorgeous map of the Spiderwick estate. And you can see down here, right in the corner, there is an N and that's for North. That's right underneath the, really the title of the map. There's streets on this one, there's houses. That's one beautiful example of a map. And then this is a book that I got last year on vacation. Um, and I got it because it is about the same area that we went to on vacation. So this is Roanoke down in North Carolina. And that's a really cool map that shows where this story, this fiction story takes place. Then we've got my son's favorite series, my youngest son's favorite series, Wings of Fire. The Wings of Fire map is beautiful. And if you don't know about Wings of Fire, it's a series that's all about dragons. And take a look at that map. Can you see that the shape of the map, of the land, is a dragon? Isn't that awesome? So this one has where all the different dragons live. And it's got this beautiful compass rose, I think, over here right in the corner to show the biggest direction is usually N, that's usually north. And then we've got things like Dragonfly Bay, the Hornet Hive, the Beetle Lake, Poison Jungle, and then the ocean is really beautiful in this map. And it has a lovely border too. You can make a really fancy border for your map. Then we've got the Marauders map from Harry Potter. Do you remember this one? If you've seen the movie or if you've read the book? so. The Marauders map is a little bit different in Harry Potter, but it shows locations inside the buildings, right? Here's a book that's all about some national parks. So there's a map of the United States, and then you can see where this family went on a road trip because there is a red line that tracks their progress. And then the national parks they went to are kind of big and extra. So you can see they went to the Everglades, they went to Yellowstone. A really neat way to show the information, which is that this family took a road trip. And then here's a book that I read last year that I loved. You might know somebody who read this book and loved it. And inside this map, there also is, inside this book, there's also a map. And look at that beautiful compass rose. And they've got actual houses on here. There are not many people lived in this area, so they were able to show some houses and the towns, the beach. And then here's one more. This book is about 
um, sort of an adventure that went wrong. So it's a true story of a journey down a river. And so this map has an inset. Can you see right here, there's a little box. So there's like two maps in one, right? And so that inset shows, this is like a close up. The big one's a close up and that shows where it's located. You can do an inset on your map too. And then we've got this cool compass up here just with the N for North. And then do you see this border? Lots of maps have borders like these, especially really old maps. You can do a border like that on your map too. And here's the scale at the bottom that shows the distances. And then the last book that I wanna end with is this really cool book that I found a few years ago called The Once Upon a Time Map Book. And this map book is imaginary places from real stories that this person has turned into maps. So this first one is Neverland from Peter Pan. Look at how amazing that map is. So they've got the compass rose, really beautiful compass rose. They've got, it almost looks 3D the way they've drawn it. You can see the mountains popping up. You can see the cliffs over there, right? You can see the village. You can see the pathways. You can see the beaches, all of that. And over here, we've got the key. And then they've got some points of interest too, like places you might wanna to go to on this map. Let me show you just a couple more. Here is the Land of Oz. So there's the compass rose. You see that same border with those like alternating dark and white bands? We've got the field of poppies. I think I see the witch's castle. There's the key. And there's the Dorothy and her friends and the hot air balloon sailing over it. Let me show you one more from this book. This one I'll do. This is The Giant's Kingdom. So from Jack and the Beanstalk, this author imagined what it looked like up on top of the beanstalk. So there's the compass rose. You can see the beanstalk rising above the clouds. And then when it gets above the clouds, you've got the giant's castle, and we've got these cliffs over here, right? It's really a very imaginative land. Rainbow there. So those are some examples just to get your brain thinking a little bit. Now I wanna give you some questions that are gonna help guide you as you make your map. The first question you might wanna ask yourself is, do I want my land to have a theme? I decided that my land, I'm gonna show you my map in a minute, does not have a theme, but you might have a lot of fun with that. You could think of a theme like Halloween. Maybe everything is Halloween themed. You could think of a theme like sports. Maybe it's all sports related or animals or food. You might do a theme like an ancient world, maybe Atlantis. You could make a map for Atlantis. You could do um, dinosaurs, something that looks like where the dinosaurs lived. You could make it a video game world with all different video game characters and locations that you know of. You can really have a lot of fun with a theme idea. You could also do a map that comes from a story that you've read because it'll be your imagination filling in all the details. So that's the first question to ask yourself because that will help you make decisions for all the rest of it. And then you want to ask what kind of landforms your land is going to have. So here's my map. And when I was making my map, I started with the outline and I just kind of made it lumpy bumpy and thought, well, I want some parts to stick out. I want to make some islands. And then I started to think about what landforms to put on. I knew I wanted to have mountains going right down the middle because I thought that could be cool and separate into two areas sort of. Maybe there's people that live on one side that don't really mix with the people on the other, or maybe they go back and forth and they have special passages through the mountains to get to each other. And I thought about um, a lake. I wanted to have a really big lake right here. And then I wanted to have an area with lots of little lakes. And I decided to make all of that up at the top, sort of a forested area, and then some desert scattered throughout. And then I thought about rivers too. Where do I want my rivers to go? I figured my rivers are gonna run from the mountains down to the sea, because that's the way the water is going to go when it rains. It's gonna go downhill. So that's why you can see rivers going from the mountains on both sides out to the sea and sometimes to the lakes too. So that was my first thing. I drew the outline, then I gave it some landforms. You're also gonna to wanna to decide what symbols you're going to use. So that went with my landforms when I decided where my landforms would go. I had to decide how am I gonna show them. So here's my legend and you can see I have one little picture of each symbol and then I show what it means in a word and then I've used those symbols on my map. 
you want to think about where is your compass rose going to go? Make sure you leave space for it. Where is the legend going to go? Where is your scale going to go? And where is your title going to go? Um, which goes along with what is your land going to be called? I didn't name my land until I was done because I didn't really know. But if you have an idea for a theme, you might do the name first off and put that title right on the top of it. So I made sure I had a space for my legend. Here's my scale. And my land is a pretty small land. So you can see I've ticked off miles. So there's one mile, two miles, three miles. So it's a pretty small land in general because it's all on its own. It's like its own little continent. And then here's my compass rose up at the top. And I just put the letter N on there just to show that that is north. But then I gave little points for the other directions too. I just didn't label them all. And then I decided that mine was called the Land of Laria. And then the last thing you want to think about is what stories does your map tell? So for instance, if you can see right here, I have a lake of fire. So I decided that first I made a really big lake and then I put a volcano in the middle because I said, oh, I bet long ago there was a volcano there but the volcano erupted and it made a huge eruption and it left a crater behind and that crater filled in with water over time but the volcano became active again and so it's building up and building up and building up and so now there's a little island in the middle that has a volcano sign because that volcano is still active i also thought about over here with these mountains there's a really big mountain range i put so this part is probably really um, cut off from the rest of my land and then I put these three little islands out there. I think those are going to be three little isolated islands where hardly anybody goes. Maybe there's mysterious stories about things that have happened there or mysterious creatures of some kind. So as you're making your map, think about the stories that your map can tell too and then when you're done and you share it with somebody, share the stories too. If you're feeling really inspired, write a story down and share that. So that is your project for today, to make an imaginary map. These questions will help guide you. Find some maps around your house that will help guide you too. And I hope that you have a great time. I really had fun making my map. I sat by the fire, I got my colored pencils out, I used pencil first, which is really helpful because I made a lot of mistakes and had to erase and change and fix things. But uh, it's, it's a fun project for today. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're enjoying all these videos. Thanks again for watching with me. See you tomorrow.